Chapter 22, Moreover, the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Now, thou son of man, wilt thou judge, wilt thou judge the bloody city? Yea, thou shalt show her all her abominations. Then say thou, Thus saith the Lord God, The city sheddeth blood in the midst of it, that her time may come, and maketh idols against herself, to defile herself. And as Christ said in Matthew chapter 23 and verse 37, O Jerusalem, Jerusalem, that's the city we're talking about, thou that killest the prophets, that's why it's called the bloody city, and stonest them which are sent unto thee, how often I would have gathered thy children together, even as a hen gathereth her chickens under her wings, and ye would not. Behold, your house is left unto you desolate. For I say unto you, ye shall not see me henceforth, till ye shall say, Blessed is he that cometh in the name of the Lord. Your house is left unto you desolate. The desolator, the abomination of desolation, written of in Matthew 24, only about 15 verses away from what we just read, where Christ said, When ye therefore shall see the abomination of desolation, spoken of by Daniel the prophet, stand in the holy place, whoso readeth, let him understand, then let them which be in Judea flee into the mountains. And here we have in Ezekiel chapter 22, concerning Jerusalem, the bloody city, thou shalt show her all her abominations, that abomination of desolation ultimately, and the bloodshed being the spiritual death that occurs at that time. Whenever all the world whores after Satan, thinking that he's Jesus' return, they'll die spiritually at that time. Thou art become guilty in thy blood that thou hast shed, and hast defiled thyself in thine idols which thou hast made, and thou hast caused thy days to draw near, and art come even unto thy years. Therefore have I made thee a reproach unto the heathen, and a mocking to all countries. Those that be near, and those that be far from thee, shall mock thee, which art infamous, and much vexed, much confused. If you look into this word vexed in the Hebrew, and Babylon means confusion. As we know from Revelation chapter 17, that horror written of there is that great city. It was Jerusalem, but it became Babylon. And the virgin bride of Christ, for the most part, will become the whore of Babylon. The virgin bride being God's elect from that point forward, as well as those that come out of the confusion because of what God will say through his election during that hour of temptation, beginning at the sixth trumpet, when Satan appears in Jerusalem. Behold, the princes of Israel, every one were in thee to their power to shed blood. Ultimately, spiritually speaking, in thee have they set light by father and mother, made light of father and mother, not honoring your father and your mother. In the midst of thee have they dealt by oppression with the stranger. In thee have they vexed the fatherless and the widow, breaking God's commandments, in other words, not hearkening diligently unto the voice of the Lord our God. Thou hast despised mine holy things, and hast profaned my Sabbath. And what is the Sabbath? Christ. Do the inhabitants of Jerusalem nowadays not profane the Christ? Do they accept Jesus as the Messiah, or are they waiting for instead of Christ, their Messiah, that is to say, their father, the devil? In thee are men that carry tales to shed blood, tale bearers, deception is what we're talking about here, and in thee they eat upon the mountains. In the midst of thee they commit lewdness. In thee have they discovered their father's nakedness. This is speaking of incest, as we know from Leviticus chapter 19. It's to sleep with your father's wife, uncovering your father's nakedness. That's what that means. In thee have they humbled her that was set apart for pollution. And one hath committed abomination with his neighbor's wife, and another hath lewdly defiled his daughter-in-law. And another in thee hath humbled his sister, his father's daughter, incest. And as it's written in the Gospels, the brother shall betray the brother to death, and the mother the daughter, and so on and so forth. Death being one of Satan's names, they will pull their family members into the many-membered body of the Antichrist, that is to say, the whore of Babylon, as opposed to the virgin bride of Christ. For every positive, there's a negative. In thee have they taken gifts to shed blood, and in the historical sense, this was very literal. Christ was even crucified in Jerusalem, and you see it nowadays on a continuing basis. 
Thou hast taken usury and increase, and thou hast greedily gained of thy neighbors by extortion, and hast forgotten me, saith the Lord God. Behold, therefore, I have smitten mine hand at thy dishonest gain, which thou hast made the money changers, those who Christ identified in Matthew chapter 23 as the generation of vipers, and at thy blood, which hath been in the midst of thee. Can thine heart endure, or can thine hands be strong in the days that I shall deal with thee? I, the Lord, have spoken it, and will do it, and will scatter thee among the heathen, and disperse thee in the countries, and will consume thy filthiness out of thee. Not only the Kenites, but their co-religionists, those who were deceived, is who this concerns. And this wasn't just in the historical sense. Whenever the tribes were scattered throughout the world, this will happen whenever Christ returns, whenever everyone that was deceived is scattered into the outer darkness, not allowed to approach Christ until the thousand years are finished, unless they follow Satan at that time. Then they're blotted out of existence. And thou shalt take thine inheritance in thyself in the sight of the heathen, and thou shalt know that I am the Lord, that our Father is Yahweh as opposed to Satan or anybody else. And the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Son of man, the house of Israel is to me become dross. We were speaking about Jerusalem, now we're speaking about the house of Israel. The house of Israel is to me become dross. All they are brass and tin and iron and lead in the midst of the furnace. They are even the dross of silver, the part that you throw away, the part that's worthless. Therefore, thus saith the Lord God, because ye are all become dross, behold, therefore, I will gather you into the midst of Jerusalem. As they gather silver and brass and iron and lead and tin into the midst of the furnace, to blow the fire upon it, to melt it. So will I gather you in mine anger and in my fury, and I will leave you there and melt you. Notice brass, iron, and silver are mentioned in Daniel chapter 2 concerning that statue, which is symbolic of Satan's one world system. It even has ten toes, which are symbolic of those ten fallen angel kings that are cast out of heaven with Satan at the beginning of that five-month period. At the end of that five-month period, Jerusalem will be cleansed at the return of the true Christ with Satan's role of Antichrist, as well as his one world system destroyed in the lake of fire. And that's when the great tribulation begins, the tribulation of Almighty God. Yea, I will gather you and blow upon you in the fire of my wrath. Our God is a consuming fire, as we know from the last verse of Hebrews chapter 12, and ye shall be melted in the midst thereof to refine them, to teach them discipline, whereby they're not blotted out in the lake of fire at the end of the thousand years, the millennium being a time of salvation. As silver is melted in the midst of the furnace, so shall ye be melted in the midst thereof, and ye shall know that I, the Lord, have poured out my fury upon you. Whenever the true Christ returns, as you can read in Revelation chapter 16, and the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Son of man, say unto her, Thou art the land that is not cleansed nor arraigned upon in the day of indignation. Now we're speaking to the land. There is a conspiracy of her prophets in the midst thereof, like a roaring lion ravening the prey. They have devoured souls. They have taken the treasure and precious things. They have made her many widows in the midst thereof. Spiritual murder is what we're talking about here. Her priests have violated my law and have profaned mine holy things. They have put no difference between the holy and profane. Neither have they showed difference between the unclean and the clean. And have hid their eyes from my Sabbaths, from the true Christ, in other words, by not teaching God's word chapter by chapter and verse by verse, but teaching the traditions of men, and I am profaned among them. Her princes in the midst thereof are like wolves ravening the prey. And if you look up this word in the Greek, whenever Christ describes the false prophets as ravening wolves, wolves in sheep's clothing, look into that word ravening and you'll even see the rapture deception within that. One of the main deceptions of the end times, because if they can get people to believe that Christ will return at any moment, they're setting people up to worship the false Christ. He's the one that appears first in Jerusalem before the true Christ returns. Her princes in the midst thereof are like wolves ravening the prey to shed blood and to destroy souls to get dishonest gain. There you have it, the destroyer being one of Satan's names, as we know from Revelation 9-11. 
and her prophets have daubed them with untempered mortar. We read of this in Ezekiel 13. Seeing vanity, that's emptiness, and divining lies unto them, such as the flyaway doctrine and other traditions of men, deception as opposed to the truth of God's word, saying, Thus saith the Lord God, when the Lord hath not spoken. The people of the land have used oppression and exercised robbery and have vexed the poor and needy, Yea, they have oppressed the stranger wrongfully, and I sought for a man among them that should make up the hedge and stand in the gap before me for the land, that I should not destroy it, but I found none. Therefore have I poured out mine indignation upon them, the seven vials of the wrath of God of Revelation chapter 16, ending with the seventh vial, which is the return of the true Christ. I have consumed them with the fire of my wrath, their own way, have I recompensed upon their heads. You do it to yourself if you fail to hearken diligently unto the voice of the Lord your God. Everyone gets what's coming to them. The choice is yours. Their own way have I recompensed upon their heads, saith the Lord God.